Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we've got a brand new delicious recipe that I am super excited about. I'm not so excited about this one because it's gonna be really dangerous for me. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews and we do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics and every Monday we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch because life exists beyond a couch. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a recipe Joe's a little bit scared of, you'll be alerted to it's it. It's not that I'm afraid of it, it's that I'm gonna wanna make it all the time. There's right. a reason there's certain recipes that we've created that I don't make very often. And it's not that they're not good, it's that I can't control myself with them. One of them being like our original cheese crackers. Oh my they goodness. They were like imitation cheese its Those are so stinking good, but yes, we have to be careful about when and how many batches that, that we make. And today, we're going back to cheese, man, yeah. and we are going to be making a recipe today that takes this delicious food cheese and makes it even tastier. Yeah, and the problem is I love cheese. I probably love cheese more than most people love chocolate. That is accurate. But we're going to make, what do we call them this? I think we should call them carnivore cheese bites. Carnivore cheese bites. There you go. Uh, it's a take on mozzarella sticks, but I think it ends up with a better texture and better flavor. Me too. You ready? Yes. This only needs four ingredients. We should make that a title, like four ingredients. Um, four ingredients, and it is super easy to make. How easy is it? It is so easy, even Rachel can make it. I am so excited about this because, hey, sometimes I want to make a little treat, leave a little love note for you, and I'd like to make an appetizer for dinner that you like, mm. and here I could do it because it's easy. Well, you ready to see what we need? Let's do it. Obviously, the first ingredient we need is cheese, but not any, like, any Ordinary. kind of cheese. We need cheese curds. Um, I got these from Aldi. You can use any kind you want, any flavor, but I like the texture that you end up with, and also cheese curds have an amazing flavor. They do have a power punch, and they're a little bit harder, so it's yeah. probably good for heat. We have garlic cheddar, and we have Cajun cheddar. Again, any kind you want. What you want to do is take these, stick them in the, free in the freezer for a couple of hours before you start making this recipe. Next thing we need is some Parmesan or Romano, any any kind of those hard Italian cheeses. You know what goes, goes good with cheese? What? Cheese. Cheese. More cheese. Last ingredient we're going to need, or actually second last ingredient, uh, we're going to use this Carnivore Crisp grass-fed beef flour. This is pretty much dried up beef. It's turned into a flour. They also have a chicken flour and they have an organ blend flour. We will not be using the organ blend for today. The ingredients on this, by the way, are beef and salt. That's that's all that's in it. Really so can't get cleaner than that. We're pretty carnivore here. We've got cheese. Which comes from an animal. We got cheese. And then we've got beef. We also need an egg because we're going to do like a wash. We're, we're keeping a meat theme. And then... I'm not going to call this ingredient, but somebody's going to say that's an ingredient too. You need some kind of frying thing because this does not work well in an air fryer. So if you try it, I'm warning you now, it's not going to be that good in an air fryer. It needs to be fried in a fat. Uh, we can shallow fry it, which is kind of what we're going to do today. And we're going to use some Wagyu beef tallow so that we can keep it carnivore. Yes, and it is delicious. And I'm going to tell you, if you're looking for something that tastes really good, Try the chocolate keto chow core with this as the, with fat, this source. As the fat source. So it's delicious. I get this on Amazon. I'll leave a link for it down below. Uh, it's from the South Chicago Packing Company. Um, but any kind of fat source is going to be fine. But I do have this. I really like it. And I actually like it better than coconut oil because no flavor. And then if yes. there's any that comes out. I put it on like, my skin. You just rub it into your skin because it makes a really so, good moisturizer. So stinking good. You ready? Yes. Okay, let's get everything together and we'll start this recipe. So we also need a couple of bowls and then a fork. First thing we're going to do is take an egg and crack it into a bowl and go ahead and whisk it up. Okay, that's good. Okay, now in our other bowl, we're gonna put our two ingredients. 
And so the first thing we're going to use is Parmesan cheese and then we're gonna use one of the beef flours. This is very simple. It's one to one. Right. Okay. And so whatever you wanna start off with is what you're gonna do, one to one. I would recommend starting off with just a little bit and then you can always create a bigger mixture and add in more just in a one to one ratio so that you're not wasting your mixture. So what we're gonna start off with is just like one tablespoon of each one. Actually, I think we're gonna do a bunch of these cheese curds, so we're gonna go two tablespoons. So we'll go two tablespoons of your beef flour, flour and then two tablespoons of our Parmesan cheese. And then we're gonna go ahead and mix that up real well. Now that that's all mixed up, all we're gonna do is take our cheese, dredge it in the egg, and then coat it in our coating, and then we can put it off to the side, and we'll make a few with each one. Again, this will work better if you at least partially freeze the cheese, but if you don't, it will still work. You just have to be careful because it's gonna get a little bit gooey. And also what I like to do is use the bigger pieces if you can. So we're just gonna go ahead and coat them in the egg and then cover them with our like breading. This is really nice because we're not adding any breading at all and therefore all we have is the carbs inside the cheese already. Now that we have all of the cheese breaded, uh, we're gonna go ahead and fry them and you're gonna just fry them in a pan. You can shallow fry them where you're not covering it completely if you want. Uh, just flip them over and this is gonna be a pretty quick process because all you're trying to do is obviously crisp up that outside and since you've got Parmesan cheese in there, it's gonna crisp up very quickly. You're gonna do this in an oil. You wanna have the oil between 325 to 375 degrees. So you ready? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and drop them in. Don't splatter yourself. In case you're wondering, beef tallow does not have some sort of strong smell. When you're rendering it down, it does. It's got a bad smell when you're yeah, rendering it. Yeah, but, but when it's like this, no. Yeah, it doesn't even have a flavor, except for it does have a slight beef flavor, but it's not overwhelming like when you're using uh, lard or something like that. Okay, once they're crisped up, we're just gonna take them out and Ooh. we're gonna transfer them. And you know, you could have some that are kind of gooey, so just gently pull them out of the, uh, the, the frying oil. And it was that easy. That was crazy fast for something that looks this delicious. When you ready to try it? Yeah. So over here, we have a little bit of like a horseradish cream sauce. Yes. It's just horseradish mixed with some yogurt. Go ahead and grab one. Dink it. Dink. Dink. Mmm. Mmm. Crunchy on the outside, gooey on the inside. And the Parmesan brings the perfect salt level to yeah. that. That's why between the salt that's in the beef flour and then the salt that's in the Parmesan, you don't need to add any salt at all. Oh my it really has a really good flavor. And again, if you freeze the cheese ahead of time, you can get it even crispier. You just have to find that, that moment where it's crispy enough to pull out, but you don't want the cheese to start gooing out. While you were taking pictures. And then wait, before you eat these, sour cream and horseradish together. Yeah. Hello, it's so good. Well, before you were taking <gasps> pictures, oh. I had a little bit left, so I just took some jarred pickles. Oh, sorry. And Dink. Got, went ahead and uh, covered those as well. That, oh my gosh, I love that too. Wow. I'll try one without it. Dink. Dink. So. That is good. I love the cheese though. Yeah, you can use this batter for anything, but it works really, really well with cheese curds. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos we have linked right over here. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent videos I'm gonna put right over there. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we make something cheesy, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.